Man, there's always got to be some cyber hate going on. People love to hate Tesla. We're going to hop into two videos today. They're going to be about the cyber truck. There's going to be a lot of cyber hate, but let's get great. Let's overrise and overcome the hate. Let's begin. I want to say before we start this video, in the first half, I'm going to be very nice because I like the cyber truck a lot. However, the second half, I'm going to get pretty angry, so get ready for it. And now for the fanboys watching this video, and we'll defend this truck to no end, I want to let you know something. You're not going to like this. Elon will not let you sleep with him. Actually, sorry, take that back. Let's fact check that. He will if you work for one of his companies. So I was wrong. Four years. Woo, a lot of hate coming on, calling people fanboys, throwing shade, calling people gay. And that's not cool, but whatever, right? Let's talk about the facts. Let's get into it. But it seems like he's already in his feelings. Nothing new there, but let's continue. Years ago, I made joke about the Cybertruck before it even came out, and I wanted to take this time to apologize about those comments I made about something that didn't even exist at the time. However, I was more making fun of the future owners than the truck itself because, well, Tesla fanboys make my job way too easy. Now, fast forward the clock. The Cybertruck is here. It's been out for a while, and just about every ounce of content has been milked from this poor vehicle, so I figured this is the right time for me to swoop in and give my thoughts that no one asked for. Every video has been done already when it comes to build quality and towing and range, and is it really bulletproof? Ride quality cold weather performance hundreds of videos of people putting their finger in the front to see if it snaps it off all of that now just a few short months ago a cyber truck was selling for the two hundred and forty thousand dollar mark and as of today in may of 2024 they're going for about low hundreds 105 to 107 mark and falling every day people may be catching on to the fact that they paid over a hundred thousand dollars for a foundation truck that just has laser etching and full self-driving which doesn't work right now but they want you to pay full price now for something you'll get later but i figured this is an opportunity to see well full self-driving is there but full self-driving supervised let's be specific all right and it's not full self-driving nor has it ever been it's always been supervised or in a certain level but no one has marketed as something that is fully level five self-driving. No one said that, but, you know, I guess he's going to name call if I say anything he doesn't like. But let's continue. To see what all the hype is all about. So today, I'm going to spend some time with the Cybertruck. Because everyone on the planet has made a Cybertruck video, I'm not going to get into the towing capacity. Because by now, we all know that electric trucks can tow well for short distances. And I'm not going to use it like a real truck because it's not. If you use an electric pickup truck for towing, then you know exactly what you're getting into. Now, judging by the specs, the Cybertruck is no different than any of my other ego-boosting trucks. When I say ego-boosting, I mean it's a very expensive truck, but it can barely do what a gas-powered 1500 can do. It's quite literally to show people that you make so much money that you can look stupid in something, but it's okay because you have lots of money. So, the Ooh! Sound like a commie. Sound like we got a commie on the mic. And speaking of that, he spoke to that point about the price and, and it's going down and they're everywhere. He says this later in the video. We won't get that far. But I kind of actually try to look up like how to buy a goddamn, you know, cyber truck. And to be honest, a lot of them are for sale, but for higher than what people bought them for. Like, you know, it's only 100K. A lot of people are trying to sell it for more than 100K, right? Like nobody's trying to sell it for cheaper. Like the vehicle... It's being sold for more money. Of course, somebody's trying to make some money off of it, right? Like they get the car and they're trying to sell it back in the market and make more money. I'm sure they're coming up with an excuse like, oh, I'm not really trying to make money. Uh, I just have a situation where I need to actually sell it. But net net across the board, when I was looking for the lowest price, none of them was below 100000 which is the actual price for the car. So unless we're actually talking about some secondary market, and that actually determines the value of the car because it's not selling for $500,000 when it only really costs $100,000. It doesn't make any sense. With more supply of people selling it, then the price will level down, but it's not going below what people purchase the car for. And it's not all over the place. I mean, come on, considering that a country is filled with 350 million, and I don't know how many cars have been produced at this point, but people attempting to sell it for a profit I don't see that as kind of being crazy. I see that as capitalism as always. But I guess if you get the car, uh, you're a show off and all these other things. But, you know, I guess he likes to call names. Let's continue. The Cybertruck is the Balenciaga runway show of trucks. Look at these people. They look stupid, but those are $10,000 outfits, so it's fine, I guess. Now, I know Reddit is already saying, here comes another Rich Rebuilds EV bashing video, but hear me out. 
I also own an ego boosting truck and an electric pickup truck as well. So this isn't limited to just a cyber truck. As long as you're honest with yourself, I'll be honest with you too. Hey, I'm not racist. I have a black friend. Hey, I'm not racist. I have a white friend. Hey, I'm not a misogynistic. I have wife. Hey, I don't practice misandry. I have a husband. Two can be the same at once. You can still be a hater at EVs and have an EV. It doesn't make you not a hater anymore. You're a hater. It's okay. I mean, I think you should just bathe in the name versus launching claims of people being X, Y, and Z. The TRX is a pavement princess muscle truck that sags when you tow something. It doesn't come with a tow package as standard. It gets 10 miles per gallon on a good day. And to drive the TRX 100,000 miles, it's going to cost $32,000 in fuel. So trust me, I know all about ego-boosting trucks, but when I step on the gas, it goes... And kids and adults freak out when they see it. The Rivian is an electric pickup truck. The bed is tiny. The interior is small. It's a $90,000 Tacoma. The Cybertruck is similar to the TRX. It's just the electric version. And you aren't toying with it any long distances. And if you do, you just want to be seen in it. We all get it. Now, if I go online right now, I could build a Ram quad cab with 4x4 that can tow 10,000 pounds with the 3L high output engine for $55,000. The Cybertruck right now starts at 100. And when the cheaper one comes out later this year, it will still be $80,000. But let me stop myself here. Electric trucks are in a whole different league of pricing. Let's not forget my $90,000 Tacoma. So a couple years ago. He's going in a lot. He, he, uh, I think he's pretty angry. Ago, Elon sold a few billion worth of shares to Tesla stock to buy Twitter. And because he did it, I figured I could do it too. Last year, I bought more shares of Tesla. And I was supposed to sell my Tesla shares this year to buy a cyber truck. But we know how that went. I ended up losing a lot of money. So right now, I can only... Okay, so after this, we just got to stop looking at you. Like, we can't we can't listen to you when it comes down to the public market. You're out here trying to gamble. I bought a bunch of shares, but we know how that turned out. I made a loss. Why are you trying to trade? Are you a day trader? Can you see the future? Guys, what do we say on this channel? Don't be trying to day trade, okay? Like, that stuff is long, all right? And then, actually... To double back on that, this is not investment advice. <laughs> and obviously, don't take it from that guy. And also, while you're at it, vote for Elon. But let's continue. Because I want to give somebody else on the screen. This guy is a big hater. And what I'm going to show you, I'm going to read from another book. But it's actually going to show you, a lot of these guys have cognitive distance. They cannot admit when they were just wrong about something. At the beginning, he said he was wrong. But then he kind of like mulled over it like I wasn't wrong. But, 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 you know, these butt guys. Now, let's see the next guy. All right. He says, here's why the production cyber truck is a failure. The production is a failure. Now, this guy later says inside the video that he thought it was a scam and fake and the actual cyber truck was never going to be produced. Now, it was produced, but then he comes back and it starts tap dancing about, well, I meant, I meant, I meant. Guys, this is the negative media. Everyone loves to hate Tesla. Guys. Looks like we're doing this, the cyber truck. My grandma was one of those types of people that used to say, if you can't say anything nice, don't say it at all. She obviously didn't watch a lot of YouTube videos. Let me just tell you this right now. Here's a disclaimer, everybody. I am doing this reluctantly. It would be very easy for me to not make a video about the cyber truck because I openly don't like it. In this video, I'm going to tell you a whole bunch of very specific. Reluctantly, man, you a grown man, free. You ain't got to do anything that you don't want to do. You grown, you a whole man. Talking about reluctantly. Don't do it then. And your grandmama said don't say nothing nice, whatever. So you was raised right. And on top of that, you a grown man with freedom. You ain't got to review nothing. That I'm reluctantly reviewing this. Like, who got the who got the blicky to your back? Like, why are you reviewing something you don't want to review? Like, well, I, well, I hate it. Mm, sound emotional, but continue, guy. It's okay. A lot of people get emotional. It's nothing new. Specific reasons why I don't like it. But first, A, I want to thank the guys from Out of Spec Motoring for lending us their Cybertruck for this video. And B, I want to make one thing very, very clear. I want you, the car buying viewer, to be happy with what you drive. I don't mean to like what you drive. You don't need me to like what you drive. If you spend your hard-earned money on something that makes you happy, even if someone like me hates it, then I'm happy for you. I'm not going to make fun of you to your face. I'm not going to share my opinion with you. But you've come here, clicked on this video to see what I have to say about this. And in this one instance, I'm going to be very honest and tell you what I think. So should we do this? Look. Wait, hold on. What? What did he say? In this instinct, he's going to be honest. Is you? Are you usually lying? Let me see. Do this. Look, you guys all know I'm. Hold on. I'm not going to share my opinion with you. 
but you've come here, clicked on this video to see what I have to say about this. Yeah, usually you're going to talk behind people back. So he's the normie. He's going to actually say, yeah, yeah, great, great for you, and not say what he really feel, but that's okay. Probably don't want to hear his opinion. And in this one instance, I'm going to be very honest and tell you what I think. Oh, so this one instance, this one time, he's going to tell you the truth and be honest. Other than that, he get the tap dance and he, he he's a liar outside of that. He tells white lies, not big ones. Don't worry about it. But let's continue. So should we do this? Look, you guys all know I'm pretty useless when it comes to wrenching on cars. But if I had some supervision, some expert assistance, that would build my confidence to the point where I... Eh, nobody care about you tap dancing for your sponsors. Now, the Cybertruck is years late, which we know by now. It's also a lot more expensive than Elon said it would be. It has less range and less towing than Elon said it would have. And they're really pushing the limits of what they can get away with getting you to pay for, but not giving you. For instance, this truck only got a limited slip differential uh, via a software update this week, even though it's been on the road for months. You may also notice something missing from the truck, or maybe not if you're not a Cybertruck aficionado. This is a foundation series, which lets you skip to the front of the line, but also comes with some extra equipment, such as full self-driving, which this one doesn't have, and a light bar, which... You want to learn... So, two things are missing on this specific car, end of the world. Now, how many cars come out on a daily basis and it doesn't have something. But the one car that doesn't, and I don't even know the details, you just said it doesn't. Okay, let's say they drop the ball. It does not happen? Okay. I swear, I think sometimes people are just anti-American at this point. And all Cybertrucks, just like all the rest of Teslas, should have standard autopilot, which this one doesn't have. They are really pushing the limits of what they can get away with getting you to pay for but them not having to deliver until some point later. There was that roadster that people paid 250 grand for and there's no sign of. And now nobody paid 250 grand for the roadster correction. The roadster took a down payment of 50 grand. No one took 200 anything. You paid a down payment, a deposit, and it hasn't been built yet. But here we go. Lie. This is what these guys do. Like get the facts straight. Maybe he's not lying. Maybe he's just not informed. That happens too. They are saying your truck comes with a light bar, but it ain't here. You can say you like the shape of the truck, and that's fine. I, I won't argue with your personal taste. But one thing that drives me nuts is poor quality, especially for $100,000. And the build quality of how this body is assembled is, in both my and out of specs opinion, worst in class. These panel gaps are absolutely atrocious. This rubber that's sort of forcing itself out of the front here, like a wart or a tumor, is abysmal for a brand new vehicle. You can actually look down the side of the body line here and see that the doors don't line up with the body. And it's actually unavoidable from the driver's seat when you're looking back at how these gaps literally don't sit on the bodywork. And just look at this wiper. Now you can argue that this wiper is the correct solution, but look how it's sitting. It's out over the A-pillar. I can fit a whole finger in between where the wiper sits and the edge of the truck. That's crazy. I mean, these are really unforgivable QC items when it comes to something that costs this much money. I wouldn't let this pass on a sub-zero fridge, let alone a six-figure truck. And speaking of... So now, now everything has to have perfect quality. Now, okay, let's say that this is quality is bad. Okay, let, I, I'll agree. But the majority after surveys been conducted from customers that accept their cars, not you looking at one car, says that the majority of customers don't have a problem with the quality. So just going off of the majority of people who receive their cards, unless you want to call them a liar, and I could call you a liar, but I prefer not to. I'll just take your opinion. The majority, after a survey was conducted, said that the majority of cars were in good quality. The small percentage out of, I believe the survey was over about 3,000 people, only a mere 5% said that the, Quality is horrible, like you're saying right now. But is that not true for any car? In any manufacturer of cars? Is that not true? I don't know, man. Sometimes people be saying things, and I'm just like looking at them like this. There's another problem. You may recall, and many Tesla cultists do recall, that I was on the Joe Rogan podcast. Now, watch this. Now he calls them cultists. I look, oh, here he go. Here you go. They start throwing rocks, they start calling you names. That's why I say, guys, you have to get dirty with people who are dirty, right? Because they're going to 
throw blows at you. They're going to call you a fanboy. They're going to call you a cultist. All right, call your names. And here you are just trying to have a different opinion than him. All right? And you said you hate Tesla, so I'm not even wrong in saying everyone hates Tesla. But net net out the gate. Fanboy calling you all these names. These are grown men, allegedly. Let's continue. Podcast about five years ago, and I said I didn't think that they could build this. I thought it was a scam or a fake. And I he thought it was a scam or a fake. That's what he said on the Joe Rogan show. That's what this man said. So let's see what this man says after he said that Tesla or Elon or whoever was launching scams or faking it. This is what this grown man said. So, okay, he was wrong. And that happens. Let's see what this man says. All right, cool. You were wrong about that. It's not a scam, nor is it a fake. Now, what are you going to say, my friend? And I was wrong, obviously. I was wrong, because look, here it is. They, they did build Okay, he was wrong. Now watch this but. Watch, watch this rebuttal, because of course, he got he to gotta get the rebuttal in, right? He can't just be like, I was wrong. I'm going to eat that. No, nah, he got to say, but, 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 but. Here we go. Build it. But let's revisit why I. But. You know how it goes. Once you say but after something, everything you said before don't even matter. But let's continue thought that i thought that because i said there was no way this truck would pass a pedestrian impact safety standard now okay so he said that it was fake and false now he's saying okay let me tell you why which i don't know if he explained on joe rogan but let's say he did all right he said it wouldn't pass a pedestrian impact safety standard okay now let's let's see okay all right now i wasn't wrong that the truck won't pass a pedestrian now, he said he wasn't wrong that it won't pass the pedestrian standard safety test. Now, watch this, guys. This is going to be real funny. All right. He wasn't wrong. It impacts safety standard. It won't. And that's why they can't sell it in Europe. I didn't think Tesla would build a product that they couldn't sell globally. But I didn't realize that America. So you were wrong about that. You didn't think that Tesla would build a product that they couldn't sell globally. Oh, well, they built it. And trucks are already not utilized in Europe like that. So trucks are not a big thing in Europe, guys, okay? Trucks are mainly in America. So you should have just known that, but okay, you didn't. Now watch this. He said globally, but I realized that America, okay. Has no pedestrian impact standards, which is crazy, but it's true. I learned that. Okay, so they don't even have it. So now it's not even a thing. You thought it was a, fam and a, a, a scam and fake based on this pedestrian test that didn't even exist for one of the largest markets of Tesla, which is America. Guys, this is the level of nonsense. <laughs> Turn that later. America has no pedestrian impact standards. And okay. America actually allows companies to self-certify a variety of aspects of safety, something we learned talking to Phil Koopman on the Swim Tire podcast. Okay, so you didn't even know. So you were out here creating imaginary tests that are not conducted in America. Well, I'm to Europe. Why are you talking about Europe? Because I also thought that they weren't going to produce a car that they couldn't sell globally. Look, you're all over the place, man. <laughs> and globally, it could still go global. Europe is not global, number one. Europe is one continent, but it's one of the smallest. Our podcast, which brings me to this. Nah, you're done. Get up out of here, man. Get up. Which brings me to this. No, which brings you to be a big loser. You were wrong about a lot of things. And it's okay. Sometimes we're wrong. But God dang, guys, make sure that you have at least the ability to say, I was wrong. And not all this, a test. And that, that I'm just trying to show you guys the level of hate. All right? Next time, ignore the opinions of experts. They're not reliable forecasters. I'm going to read from this book, okay? So check it out. On the other hand, there is an increasing evidence that relying on experts' opinion for advice is a loser's game. How can you even know that? In one of the experts' opinion on politics, economics, and business should be ignored as random bladder because experts are even less accurate than non-specialists in guessing what is going to happen. Look, but nobody really knows what's going to happen. That's why I say a lot of times that maybe a product will come out that Elon's going to build. Maybe it won't. But I won't come up to you and tell you as if I'm the oracle and say that this will not come out because it's a fan, scam and a fake. 
I don't know. I don't have the evidence to prove such allegations. Especially, I wouldn't base it off a test that doesn't even exist. So give yourself the buzzer for that. What a tedious labor of sitting and shifting through masses amounts of information. Anyway, he found among the humiliating things that the alleged experts were right less than half of the time and that they were worse than dark throwing monkeys and forecasting when multiple probabilities were involved. So what this book is attempting to say is that the experts are mostly wrong. If you actually look at all the financial correspondence and all the analysis and you go look at their ratings, majority of them are wrong, dead wrong. Massive amounts of people who write or articles about Tesla are wrong. And there's no track record or metrics to them continually being wrong. They're always wrong. They've been saying that Tesla is going to fail for the last decade. When is at one point, what is the point where people stop listening to people like that? Let me know. Let minds know. At what point do people stop listening to somebody who's been wrong for a decade? Like that, that, that's pretty funny to me, but I guess again, everyone loves to hate Tesla and for the other gentleman, which he says later that the truck is all over and and the price is going to get low. Then he got some salesmen to come on and say, yeah, it will go to $2. You know, he didn't say $2, but net, net, (laughs) the price will go down. They're all over the country. You, 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 you find it everywhere. And yeah, I find it everywhere at a higher price and I'm not trying to pay it. Yeah, people even say it, overpriced. They're trying to sell overpriced Cybertrucks. Okay. And this is a secondary market, guys. All right. So this is not actually Tesla selling. These are cars bought by people and they're attempting to resell it. So the cyber hate is to the highest. I just showed you it. I showed you two grown full men with millions of subscribers not being able to just go beyond their emotions and be able to say, hey, look, that car is not the best car for everybody. I'm not even going to argue about that. A lot of things that were done, it's pretty amazing. Some great engineering, as always, coming from Tesla. But the guy even went overboard and said that Tesla was failing because of it, because of this one model. He said, it's the beginning of the demise. Can you believe that? Let me show you this, and we're going to hit out, and we're going to end this, and I'm going to see you guys on the next one. But check this out. This guy said, Cybertruck embarrassing beginning of Tesla's demise. The demise. Might I remind you that as this guy puts that in the title, now this might be a clickbait guy, a clickbait model, right? But what what was the best-selling car in 2023? Let me know if you know what that is. The best-selling car in 2023, as this guy says, that the Cybertruck is the demise of Tesla at the same time. Tesla, Model Y, was the best-selling car model in 2023. 1.15 million sales globally. The best-selling car in the world. So I get a lot of things that they say about the Cybertruck, but to look at one model, of a limited production of amount of vehicles, like trucks is not going to be the like thing. All right. Even though a lot of Americans buy a lot of trucks, but obviously it will be a small portion of that market. And it has nothing to do with being self-centered and egotistical and all that with a new car with a fancy design. It happens. Punch buggies was like that. Ferraris, all these other fast cars are like that. So to call people names just because they want a good looking car, that's nothing. Okay. They might think it's good looking. People want to see the car. They appreciate the engineering. They want to check it out. Some people want to laugh, whatever. It's it's irrelevant. All those external markers are irrelevant, all right? It it sounds like a little, a bunch of, uh, excuse me, insecure individuals that are talk about it. But then at the end of the day, Tesla has the best-selling vehicle globally. So that just leaves us in confusion. It doesn't make any sense at that point, but it does. With one metric that will tell you everything. And the one metric that tells you everything while somebody will continue to hate on Tesla is because everyone hates Tesla. There's nothing new. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Enough cyber hate for today. I'll be on the next installment. I appreciate your time. And as I said always, go get yourself an investment advisor. All right. 
And also, stop listening to these guys. They're highly emotional. And at the end of the day, vote for Elon if you're a shareholder. Greatly appreciate it. Much respects to Elon and Tesla. See you guys on the next one.